हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू एआई लेक्चर सीरीज दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर 19 एंड वी विल बी डूइंग फर्स्ट ऑर्डर लॉजिक इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स वी स्टडीड अबाउट प्रोपोजिशनल लॉजिक बट देयर आर सम शॉर्टकमिंग्स ऑफ प्रोपोजिशनल लॉजिक देयरफॉर वी आर टर्निंग आवर सेल्फ टू टुवर्ड्स द फर्स्ट ऑर्डर लॉजिक नाउ व्हाट आर द शॉर्टकमिंग्स द फर्स्ट वन एज वी कैन सी दिस पर्टिकुलर लॉजिक वी कैन नॉट रीजन things like all birds can fly now we cannot express this in one sentence in case of propositional logic suppose we want to assert that all birds can fly so we have to assert the names of all the birds that eagles can fly pigeons can fly sparrows can fly and so on to ye case mein all birds can fly hame ek ek bird ko assert karna padega ki bhai ye fly kar sakta hai this can be done ये एक 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 सेंटेंस में हम फर्स्ट और लॉजिक में कर सकते हैं बट प्रपोजिशन वे कैन नॉट डू देन सेकेंड इज सम एनिमल्स कैन लिव इन वाटर तो यहाँ पर सम एनिमल्स के लिए हमें वो एनिमल्स के नाम बताने पड़ेंगे क्या मतलब हम एनिमल्स को एक्सप्रेस करना पड़ेगा एसेट करना पड़ेगा प्रपोजिशन लॉजिक में हम नहीं कर सकते एक साथ ये एक, हम नहीं बता सकते ऐसा दिस सेंटेंस के नॉट बी एक्सप्रेस इन वन सिंगल सेंटेंस प्रपोजिशन लॉजिक में नहीं कर सकते बट फर्स्ट ऑर्डर में कर सकते हैं then uh, second drawback this logic any proposition logic has limited expressive power and uh, third uh, shortcoming ye hai it is difficult to represent complex sentences so it is matlab agar koi complex sentence rahega to uske liye hame difficulty ho jayegi proposition logic mein se express karne ke liye so therefore uh, we use this uh, first order logic now then we have a uh, programming approach is one is the called the procedural approach uh, second is the declarative approach so what is the difference between them if we compare so in uh, procedural approach facts cannot be derived from other facts so if we have some facts and we get some more facts we cannot derive one from the other but in case of declarative approach facts can be derived from other facts and also one more thing knowledge and inference these are separate entities but in procedural approach they are uh, in one and the same thing okay. then uh, second difference is procedural approach lacks expressiveness to handle partial information so procedural approach now what is more procedural means we, we have uh, like languages c++ java and so on these are the high level languages procedural languages lisp uh, declarative means uh, propositional logic approach or what we are going to study is uh, this uh, logic first order the logic approach so declarative approach uh, we can handle uh, partial information okay if the information is partial then also we can uh, we will be able to solve the problem next uh, is a uh, procedural language do not have compositionality property but declarative language they have this property now what is the meaning of this compositionality now in case of declarative languages what your function we are writing okay they have a uh, meaning related with that suppose we write s12 i will take this red one so if we if we write this s12 okay and s13 so if uh, s12 it uh, says that uh, there is a stench in 12 and s13 it asserts that there is a stench in 13 so this composite sentence it says that there is a stench in 12 and there is a stench in 13 so this is what declarative language say uh, this is the compositionality so if this has a meaning this has a particular meaning then we can when we end they, they, they give a particular meaning meaningful word but in case of procedural approach this thing is lagging we cannot find such things okay it might happen that we may say s12 is a stench in 12 and s13 is a stench in 13 and this might be something like a uh, uh, there the, the match between india and australia ended in a tie so this is what uh, is lagging in a procedural language approach so next we start with the syntax and semantics of first order logic first is a sentence so in first order logic we have a sentence which can be an atomic sentence or or maybe a complex sentence now 
uh, atomic sentence it consists of a predicate predicates may be they may be true they may be false they may contain like terms what are ter terms means the terms may be functions constants variables etc then in order to make a complex sentence complex sentences are they consist of uh, combining sentences with uh, some logic uh, operators like this one negation of a sentence is a complex sentence so we have a sentence when we negate it becomes a complex sentence then sentence and sentence then sentence or sentence sentence implies a sentence then sentence by condition uh, with another sentence then we have quantifier that we will see quantifier afterwards so then uh, in case of term we have seen here terms a term uh, consists of a function it may be a constant it may be a variable now this quantifies there are two types of quantifiers used uh, this is one uh, this one and this one there are two quantifiers this is called uh, for all and this is there exists we'll see it afterwards we'll see it in more detail afterwards then constants constants are denoted by capital okay the first letter is capital like a is a constant a john is a constant a name of a person name of a country so j is denoted by the, the first letter is capital then variables uh, they are denoted by small letters then predicates they can be true false or maybe any uh, verbs then function mother left leg or any other relation we can say then uh, operator precedence is uh, first is negation then uh, equal then uh, and or implication and by condition so these are the operator precedence so here we have an example to represent the first order logic uh, so in this example we have two persons here richard john so uh, john is the king and uh, john and richard they are brothers and this is the left leg of uh, richard this is the left leg of john there's a bump over here lump over here and we have a crown so how do we how the what are the symbols and interpretations in this case now objects in first order logic we have objects relations functions uh, so what are the objects in this case richard is a object then john is the object then left leg of richard left leg of john and crown these are the objects in this case then we have some relations we need to we, we have some relations like on head now what is on head so we can say crown is on the head of john okay. so this is the relation then brother brotherhood this brother so we can say richard is the brother of john and john is the brother of richard so this is a uh, connecting two persons two objects here this on head only connects one it is on on the head of uh, john then a king so we can say richard is the sorry uh, john is the king then function we have function we can define a function that left leg okay, is a function in this case now in first order logic we have terms so a term is a logical expression that refers to an object now here this like for example we have this left leg john so this refers to king john's left leg then we have atomic sentences so atomic sentences form from a predicate 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 symbol and can be followed by a list of terms in brackets now one more thing first order logic is also called as predicate logic so this is how we represent like here what does this uh, particular sentence say that richard is the brother of john okay so richard is the brother of john this is how we read the sentence and it is written in this form predicate logic then atomic sentences can have complex terms as arguments for example we are given uh, what does this particular uh, sentence say this one uh, father of richard is married to mother of john because uh, of course this richard and john are brothers so father of richard is married to mother of john this is how we read now then we have complex sentences uh, so atomic sentences along with logical connectives can be used to construct complex sentences so here we are in the, in the first case we are using this negation so what does this mean uh, left leg of richard is not the brother of john 
okay so this is how we read it left leg this left leg of richard is not the brother of john this is how we express then uh, the next sentence is connected by this and connective so this is a uh, this is a simple uh, we can say sentence okay atomic sentence and this is another out atomic sentence and they are connected by this and so what how we read richard is the brother of john and john is the brother of richard then next one is richard is the king or john is the king then the final one richard is not the king implies john is king so this is uh, how we have a complex sentence now next we have a uh, quantifiers these quantifiers are not in uh, propositional logic so we have quantifiers in predicate or first order logic so quantifiers are used to express properties of entire collection of objects instead of enumerating the objects by their name as we have seen in propositional logic we cannot say all birds can fly but here we can express by using the quantifiers so there are two standard quantifiers in first order logic the first is the universal quantifier uh, and this is the symbol for this universal quantifier and then we have existential quantifier it is denoted by this symbol now going back to the example let us see the use of universal quantifier so this particular sentence we are given here this one how do we read it it says for all x x is a king implies x is a person so we have this particular predicate logic sentence how we read is for all x where x is a per where x is a king implies x is a person so uh, this x for all x who so, so what we say universal quantification is uh, this this particular uh, sentence is applicable for all x whoever is a king is a person so if we instantiate the if we take the value of x as richard then we have richard is a king so instead of x we have richard so for all means for everyone okay so x is richard it mean it implies that x is a person okay and when we put x as king john so we say king john is a king and king john is a person then again this one uh, richard's left leg if x becomes richard's left leg so this particular uh, if we substitute here x okay so we say uh, richard's left leg is a king implies richard's left leg is a person and if we imply john's left leg whatever objects in this case uh, as we have seen there are five objects so if we put whatever knowledge base our in, in our knowledge base we have five objects so it means all these sentences we can assert all these sentences okay but we know that uh, many of the sentences they are, they don't have any meaning okay they are useless sentences so here this implies symbol because we are using in this case for all x x is a king implies x is a person so this implication symbol because of this implication symbol all this uh, sentences are ruled out this one is ruled out okay this is incorrect this is incorrect okay this we cannot uh, conclude this only this particular sentence can be concluded okay the reason we will uh, know now that only this can be concluded because in implication p implies q okay so p implies uh, true uh, when for all the cases except when p is false and q is true so this particular case this this implication becomes false okay so p implies q is false when p is false and q is true so for all the cases all the cases uh, this is false because we know richard is not a king and richard's left leg is not a king john's left leg is not and crown is not a king so we only have one king that is king john is the king so because this particular uh, for this particular is only this will be possible and rest all will be impossible okay uh, so uh, here the use of implication rules out all the above statements except the second which is because x is king john okay now here we can see we uh, we have not used and here instead of implication if we use and then all these sentences will might, might become true okay so uh, this particular way is a, a wrong way of expressing the above statement so here implication should come okay
Now next is existential quantification. We have the sentence for existential quantification. So what does it say? There exists X where X is a crown and X is on the head of John. So we have a crown, uh, X is a crown and X is on John's head. So there exists X. We are not using uh, for all, we use existential quantifier. Uh, existential quantifier. Now, with respect to X, we have five objects. Okay. First is the Richard. So if we put the value of X as Richard, then Richard is, it becomes Richard is a crown and Richard is on the John's head. Then uh, we, an we have another object, King John. So if we put X as King John, we have John, King John is a crown and King John is on John's head. Then we have Richard's left leg, then John's left leg and the crown is a crown because crown is also an, uh, 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 an object in our case. So X can also take the value of crown. So these are the five sentences which can be asserted. Okay, But we know that this is incorrect. Okay, we cannot have John, Richard is not a crown. Okay, so this all the sentences are false because the why, why? So here we can see here we have this and symbol. Okay, so the use of this and in this particular existential quantification it rules out the first four cases. Okay, so only the last statement is true because uh, this and is true when both, both of them are true. Okay, so now. If we say crown, crown, okay, in, in this case, crown is a crown and crown is on John's head, okay. So, here we say this is true, okay, and rest all are false because of the use of this and symbol or and and logical connective. Okay? Now, here we cannot use implication. This particular implication cannot be used for there exist. If we use this, then all these sentences will become true. So, what we conclude from uh, the previous slide and here, that for implication, the natural connective is, uh, na implication is the natural connective with respect to for all, and connective is a, and is a natural connective to use with there exist. Okay. So, that's all for this lecture. We will be continuing this same thing in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.